Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And Quinn has uploaded a video talking about how he has already quit World of Warcraft, not even a week and a half before the expansion has really been underway or anything has really started. And he's made a lot of points that he's got as bullet points in this video. I've watched this video and I've thought about it a lot. And I wanted to make a video reacting to it and responding to it and what I think he could do to enhance his experience with the game and maybe taper his expectations a little bit and point out some things that I think are just completely wrong about it and other things that I may actually agree a bit with him. So the first thing is cadence of release and this is something that i actually do agree with him a bit um, but i also understand from blizzard's perspective why they've done you know the release the way that they've done it so basically you know the season doesn't start until september 10th it's like three weeks it feels like a really long time of just no end game content i think the reason that they've done this is because they've gone into this expansion with the intention that the majority of players expect to play alts warband features account wide you know features sending gear to alts all of this type of stuff is account wide the entire purpose of this expansion is to be really alt friendly and the reason that i think having an alt friendly expansion is good is because if you've leveled through one class committed to it and you end up not liking it um uh, it, you know in previous versions of the game it takes a long time to re-roll you're just kind of stuck and you got you got you're stuck with something that maybe you got bored of or maybe you just don't like or maybe it's not performing to the level that you need it to and you're not getting invited to groups so by having the ability to play a lot of alts if you level a character and you get in that position where you either feel bored or don't feel that viable you can quickly re-roll to something else or just expand and explore every option that the game has got and to me over the long term that's going to lead to a higher player retention than just locking somebody in onto one thing because they're inevitably you know going to get bored with it after a while and and, and or that it's going to be unviable or not suited for the content that they want. And they're going to feel stuck. So I kind of understand why they've done it myself personally, you know, hindsight it, what is it like hindsight is, you know, more accurate. Obviously it's easier to look at it now and be like, this should just, this should have been different. Um, I would have probably moved the release of the season a week, one week earlier. So that way you had like a week and a half, two weeks to prepare your character and your alts. But I understand why Blizzard has done that, left it that way. And I feel like cadence of release has been something that, has you know had its problems in different expansions like season of discoveries cadence and things like that so it's it's important to discuss this because it does have an impact on it but i don't think it's like that doomsday -y end of the world scenario enough to like quit the game like sure maybe if you only want to play one character or two characters do the couple things you need to do for this week to maintain it and then wait for the 10th before you've really decided to quit the game because it's on the 10th where you know the actual end game really starts to get underway whether you're dungeons raids or pvp so that, that would be my first point for this with the time gate he talks about the overworld um and how it's dead and i just completely disagree with this uh i i struggle not at all to find world pvp and if you've seen my content on twitch or my videos here on youtube i'm constantly able to find skirmishes it's just the battles have moved their location as opposed to the entrances of dungeons that he that he points out as a criticism instead it's at high volume world quest areas or campaign choke points right there are certain choke points like when i entered hollow fall you look over this cliff um, and you listen to farron talk a little bit and i had an ellie shaman trying to thunderstorm me off the off this cliff and i jumped back and i killed him and i killed his friends there that were trying to laugh at me getting sent off the cliff and it was a funny world pvp moment for me so to me the the overworld is fine you just need to look at high density world quest locations. so look at the map and be like oh this quest has a valuable item that everyone's going to want so if i go there i'm going to find other players and you can create these moments that the game has always had some of the most epic moments that the game has always had the, the world doesn't feel dead at all um I, I think that the you know it's it's more alive than ever i've really actually been enjoying world pvp i log on every day and i and i find opportunities for it he has some criticisms towards flying and i feel like this is like more of a subjective thing like some people want the flying right away because they don't want to just be walking but i can also see the argument that hey you kind of totally neglect the terrain and bridges and cliffs and things that you can interact with i would honestly like more ways to dismount enemy players right now there's an item and i don't even know if he knows that it exists there's an item things called the netomatic which allows you to shoot players on their fly mounts and dismount them to the ground so you can fight them so he'd probably have more fun in these world pvp scenarios if he had that item i think there should be more options there is the the whirling surge as well with the dragon that if you press your i think it's on your default three bind you can fly through an enemy player on their mount and you can send them crashing down to the ground in order to attack them and i've always had a lot of fun with that so more tools to interact with players on their flying mounts and getting them down to the ground with warm 
mode, I definitely think could be an improvement, but it's such a subjective thing. And I, I really don't see it as like a bad thing necessarily. Like it, this, again, it's so subjective that I've seen some content creators that say, oh, I love that I got flying right away. And then it's others, they don't. And it's, it's an entirely subjective matter. But again, I don't think it's something that's worth quitting the game over. Sure, there could be, you know, a couple more things to interact with flying mounts, like I think. But it's definitely not enough for me to think that you should just quit playing the game. He talks about World PvP again being dead at this section of the video. I just disagree. I think World PvP is awesome. He talks about how dungeon queues have emptied the world. I don't know if he knows this, but I, you have to walk to Mythic Plus dungeons and you have to walk to the raid. Um, those aren't out yet. But when they come out, there will be those moments that he can do that. Like I've said already, that you can just go to World Quest locations and you'll find World PvP. The world is absolutely not empty. Uh, people are farming professions. They're mining. They're herbing. I'm even doing that when I'm in the queue. I'm constantly interacting with players and fighting them over a node, although you don't really need to. I just do it for fun. Um, attack them while they're trying to mine a node. There's helicopters that fly through the zone and drop off PvP boxes that create little skirmishes to fight over. Although I would like those helicopters to be a little higher off the ground right now. The helicopters are like so close to the ground that you get barely any time to get to them to fight over the box but the world has pvp in it, it it's constantly filled with it, littered with it it's everywhere there's world content weekly to engage with whether you're doing the weekly pvp quest to collect your sparks or you're doing the weekly uh, world soul quest i think it is now that causes player to fly through these like little balls in the sky and pick things up like i don't know where he's what he's talking about there's, pe there's people doing all of that stuff it's all there um, it doesn't make any sense to me. He thinks war mode has killed the game. I don't agree with this. Um, this is an optional mode that increases your rewards a little bit from the world. So you can opt in at any time to want to PVP in the world and then opt out to, of it if maybe you don't feel like doing it. And I think it's been one of the best additions that the game has ever had. So that you're never stuck on a server that ends up being lopsided to one faction and you're just unable to do anything. You can opt into this layering phase of world PVP that's going to be more balanced in terms of finding other players to combat. So I, I disagree with this one. I think war mode is like one of the best features that they've they've put into the game. He goes into class design, and there are some points on this that I do agree with. Um, and then there's others that I don't, mostly because he kind of contradicts what he says a little bit later on with what he said here. Um, and one of those things is like AOE damage. Every class has a whole bunch of AOE damage, which is absolutely true. And I do think that that was intended to try and make classes more competitively viable in Mythic Plus. And it does come with downsides in PvP, so that if you want to play more tactically with CC, it becomes a lot more difficult because AOE generally breaks CC. And this is something I think that possibly they could iterate on uh, into the future. Maybe CC effects don't break to AOE damage procs, because they have done that with some AOE AOE in the past. Maybe they need to update that list to include more AOE abilities so that they don't break um, CC that frequently. But I don't really see the classes shifting in, you know, a drastic different direction, like single target, completely PvP isolated to PvE. I just don't really see that happening, at least based on the interviews that I've watched so far from class designers um, for the game. I think that's likely going to stay that way, um, which can, can be unfortunate. But at the same sentiment, when I've been doing Battlegrounds, crowd control is absolutely necessary. If you want to take a flag or capture a base um, or kill an enemy flag carrier, crowd controlling them, holding them in place, CCing healers, this is all like the most important stuff that you can do it, it you absolutely have to do it um one thing that i haven't really liked though is epic battlegrounds i don't know if you guys agree with this but it seems like the monsters and bosses are not tuned appropriately so like you get one shot in isle conquest by the boss just auto attacking you or jumping up in the air and a, a lot of like the siege vehicles and things like that just absolutely run you over and ashran the the hero mobs of people irl that they've put into the game just kill you really fast it just seems like those numbers are totally off so i would definitely recommend like avoiding it. it's really unfortunate also that the weekly quest for more honor is epic bgs when they're like this because it just seems like it's just way off the numbers are way off so if you've been doing epic bgs i could understand why your perspective of pvp would likely be negative because these experiences just seem like they haven't been adequately tuned for um and that's something that i would obviously like to see improved um, but regular bgs world pvp even 1v1 -y, right seems really good um he talks about homogenization which i totally disagree with um i i think that in a game like WoW that has like close to 40 specs and none of those specs are identical to each other whatsoever in every capacity is absolutely wild. That's like an amazing feat to achieve because even if we go back into older games like Super Smash Brothers for N64, we're going to have clone characters. You got Captain Falcon and Gandalf, or not Gandalf, kick. Um, I'm forgetting the guy's name from Zelda, Ganondorf. 
not Gandalf, Ganondorf and Captain Falcon. You've got Fox and Falco, right? Like these characters are clones of each other. They have the exact same abilities. They're just a different skin. WoW doesn't have that. Sure, some specs like, hey, I've got an AoE stun and this class also has an AoE stun, but that class probably deals with uh, defense differently than yours or it deals with mo- its mobility differently, right? So he's playing Enhancement Shaman and Rep Paladin. Enhancement Shaman and Rep Paladin share the niche of being kind of hybrid healing defense oriented melee. So they both heal allies. They both got that similarity. But the difference comes into how they disrupt enemies. So Enhancement Shaman is very aggressive disruption. It interrupts cast. It redirects spells. It roots enemy attackers. Um, Whereas Rep Paladin is much more about buffing its allies and aiding them out of disruption, freedoming them out of roots, and sanctuarying them out of stuns and fears, and bopping them from physical damage and protecting them. So while they do fall under a homogenized umbrella of being like a hybrid melee support class, they both do it in entirely unique ways that makes them feel entirely entirely independent from each other so i, I kind of disagree with this point and it also goes back into the age-old argument of class versus player players complain like oh we don't have a shaman so now we don't have bloodlust or tremor totem so we can't literally do the raid so we, we just don't raid tonight so blizzard changed it so you don't need that they don't make boss mechanics like that so that you can kind of just fill it in and get the raid done if you absolutely need to which was an adaptation that the game needed um due to limiting time schedules the fact that they're introducing so much more solo content so that if you don't have a lot of time to play you can still progress your character they're trying to appeal to a wider audience they're trying to make sure that everybody's happy i I think that honestly it's they do a pretty awesome job as far as um class design outside of like everybody's aoe right now um i actually think there is a lot of unique elements to a lot of specs given the fact that there are close to 40 of them um and that even though there's like a couple of similarities between each spec and what they have they all have a unique identity right like there's only like a destro lock has curse of havoc that lets you duplicate your spells into a second target um and no other class has that it makes you think about your spells differently for that moment while it's going on i I actually think that other than the aoe um that the class design is actually really good i think that the you know the pvp pacing uh is getting a lot better because it used to be a lot worse than it is now but again if you're doing an epic bg and you're running into a fight that has five healers nothing's probably going to die in that situation and that's kind of like an epic bg tuning issue more than anything else that i've seen so far um and i don't really experience that so much in in lower scaled group size groups like random battlegrounds um and arenas and it's something that they're aware of i think they also agree i mean we moved into shadowlands and are like alinka said something like you know players have got to die you know and they they realize the mistake of slowing down the game too much from bfa and it's been an ongoing process of trying to get that right and it's not something that's like really simple to get right but when we talk about pvp balance and class design for the start of this expansion this is easily one of the most uh, you know best expansion releases in terms of viability there's so many specs that are viable i think for him it's a bit unfortunate that he picked enhancement shaman if you've watched any of my tier list you know enhancement shaman is probably like the second worst spec in terms of performance i think if he picked something like a fury warrior his perspective of the game would be completely different right now um in terms of wanting strength and power he's just picked one of the specs that's performing at the lowest end of it and obviously you know bm hunter enhance i'd like to see this class get buffs and tuning and that's something that they do they do they're doing active tuning every single week this is kind of like a cataclysmic i'm quitting the game because he hasn't realized that all of this stuff has actually been changing actively it's just not happening immediately right now in this week but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen um he talks about pvp gear scaling he talks about how it's basically like a template but i don't really agree with this because any state of the game could be considered a template if we go back to wrath of the lich king your best in slot was shadow morn so that's your template you either have it or you don't and you feel like crap if you don't have it and you, you feel like a god if you do um and then rng loot from pve this is the most frustrating experience i've ever had in the game going into dragon soul trying to farm the cunning of the cruel trinket that proc shadow bolts onto enemies and it just never dropped every single week i did it on every difficulty it never dropped i never saw it and i had to lose to every single caster that had that trinket and i was miserable because it never dropped i i really don't want to do content where I'm not guaranteed my reward. And then I have to fight people that got lucky and got in the first week. And I don't get it for a long time. I think that's really frustrating. I think that the current system is way better. Uh, He comes across a bit as somebody who wants to be able to grind a bunch of gear and then overpower players with that gear. That's what he wants to do. And the thing is, is that you can actually still do that in the game. It's just the powerful gear isn't available yet because the season hasn't started. If you get a full set of Conquest gear, you will absolutely dominate anybody that doesn't have that. But the Conquest gear isn't available yet because the season hasn't started. So he's already quitting before he's even really given that part of the game even a chance because it's definitely the case. It is 100% the case. He also talks about how PvE gear is not included in PvP, which is absolutely false. If you played Dragonflight Season 4, you would know that melee classes use the legendary weapon. You'd know that casters use the 
the one-handed mace that proc shadow flame damage. You know that they'd use a ring that proc a fire shield and a little bit of extra fire damage. They had embellishments that came from PvP with like snowballs that we saw in tournaments with players like Trill. You absolutely incorporated some elements of PvE gear into PvP. And I personally was somewhat frustrated by it, but I kind of just did it on the characters I wanted to be the most competitive with. And I think it's going to be the case also in the War Within that there's going to be a couple of items that are like, you know, three to five percent better that come from PvE. I think Rogues right now is one that has been discussed um, from PvE, possibly from raids and stuff like that. So it's obvious that he didn't play the last season of Dragonflight. He doesn't understand all those changes and improvements have actually happened to the game and are likely still going to happen to the game because he's not actually giving the game a chance because it hasn't even come out yet. The season hasn't even started. He's just done the leveling period um, for a game that has been designed for players to get to max level and do these end game loops. And the reason is because if you make a game that's just get to max level and then do the raids and you're done and you quit all of those MMORPGs, their player base has fallen off a cliff. They don't, they're not here anymore. They have no player retention. So this is an adaptation of the games um, to, in order to survive, you need these end game loops, these repetitive systems, uh, in order to keep players engaged with upgrading their character week after week, completing higher and higher dungeon keys, pushing their arena higher and higher, going after more competitive mounts and transmogs in order to feel like you've always got something to look forward into the game, as opposed to the older school style of MMORPG that was level to 60 takes a long time, but then once you get there, there's nothing to do. And then you've killed the boss and what are you going to do? You sit around just like you cleared the raid, there's nothing else to do. And, you know, the player base starts to dwindle as a result of that. So to me, that's an adaptation of the genre in order to survive because every other, you know, game in the genre is starting to to decline unless they're in heavily steeped in nostalgia. And even those games, I think, are starting to see a decline. Um, he goes into the WoW token discussion. WoW token, again, like I wouldn't, you know, I'd like it if it wasn't there, but I know that people are still going to buy it. And he talks like you should just ban them anyways. And I agree with that. Um, but it's like you can make a ton of gold from professions, like millions of gold from professions. He talks about how he doesn't want to do the professions because it doesn't seem worth it. I don't think he's actually played the system at all if he thinks that way. <laughs> like I've seen people making millions of gold and the wild token is not exactly cheap. Like, yeah, he's a really big, successful streamer, making, makes a lot of money. So maybe it's just he thinks it's worth it. But for the most people who play this game, you know, the wild token ain't exactly free. And if you can make a ton of gold with these profession systems that all got upgraded, they got new menus, they got new screens, they enhanced that system so much. And I'm somebody who doesn't really just do professions because I don't really like it, right? Um, but the profession system is really good. And the thing what's funny too is like, I think he wants the old professions where like you got, you know, an item you could bring into PVP that would make you more powerful than somebody else. Again, to, to feed into the fact that he just wants to beat people because he outgears them. You can still do that. Um, there was a grenade item in Dragonfly from engineering that allowed you to clump enemies together and then you could just AOE and blast them down with an effect. And I saw a bunch of clips. Uh, I think his name was Alunith. Uh, he was a mage. He had a bunch of TikToks I remember seeing. There's engineering items. You can only use them in random BGs and not competitive content, but there actually are some items. And there might even be items now that I don't know about because I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to go for that gear advantage or power advantage, but it could be kind of cool. And he's just not giving that chance. He doesn't know it exists. He hasn't even looked at it. Hasn't even bothered. It's literally a week and a half into this. It's like the game hasn't really even started and he's already giving up. Right. Um, but people were going to buy gold anyways. And you, you saw it in classic with its re-release and there was GDKPs and there's no way these people farm that much gold right like there's no way they naturally farm that much gold and with how high the gdkp prices of everything was and i don't want to deal with rng on loot and stuff like that so what are you going to do at this point it just kind of feels like a necessary evil but people still do uh, boost for gold people still do that to try and avoid buying the wild token because it's it's not free unless you're a rich streamer then then maybe it's free and you're, you're better off doing that um i i don't know to me i feel like a lot of gamers now they're like 25 to 35 years old um, our dopamine receptors are totally fried. Like when you're a kid, right? You're a little kid and you're in a car and you see a tree for the first time, you get really excited about seeing a tree because you've never seen it before. You're freaking out. It's amazing. You want to, you want to see more trees, but now, you know, the video games are the trees. You've played video games for 20 years. You've seen everything, every single angle that it can possibly come from everything that it can offer you. And this is why we see games peak, fall, peak, fall, peak, fall, peak, fall. And that's getting faster and faster and higher and smaller. And it's, it's our brains, man. Our, our brains just humans are not evolved to deal with how much like levels of dopamine and entertainment that we have access to on an ongoing basis right now right like it's it's crazy to think about all of the different video games we've got like when kids in the back in the day used to be they play with a stick in the yard they, they, you know they didn't have tiktok to constantly scroll through an infinite number limitless number of videos that constantly stimulate your brain and i feel like a lot of people don't talk about this this the stimulation to your brain that's totally fried so for me personally i think you know he, he's valid he can have his own opinion his own criticism for the game if he really wants to enjoy the game he should probably re-roll from enhance i think if you play a class that's on the absolute bottom of the totem pole 
of PvP balance, you're probably not going to have the best time. Rhett's kind of mid-pick. He seems really frustrated with healers, so I would recommend he play something like a Fury Warrior or a Marksmanship Hunter, something that has Mortal Wounds and High Burst um, and CC that can deal with healers more effectively, and the Rhett Paladins are enhanced, right? Like, Rhett Paladin enhanced, they're hybrid support. They're not really the role that's ever going to be capable of, like, killing a healer by themselves um, in, in the current design and concept of their unique place in the game. So he kind of needs to shift what, what class he's playing for to enjoy it more. And I also think he needs to wait until the season starts because you can get a gear advantage it's you know it's maybe not as much as it was before but there's definitely a gear advantage you can get once the conquest season starts for sure wait till the season starts just do the bare minimum right now maybe level fury warrior or something like that do the bare minimum maintain your character and wait for the season to start and i almost guarantee the the perspective of this it, it's it's going to change it, it's absolutely going to change but i wanted to give my two cents on this um because i've been thinking a lot about it uh, and i've seen like some criticisms coming through for the war within already before it's like really even started um based on people's opinions of things that they i don't think they've even tried or they don't even know has changed or happened because they quit wow for like three years and they're coming back and they don't realize it that like this stuff's going to improve it's going to change um so yeah that, that's it thank you guys for listening to the video here hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one